I'm Dixie Agostino with Switch Gear Search and Recruiting. Today we're talking about the scorecard. So last video we talked about the outcome, the metrics, we, and now we're going to add a little thingy to it, the competencies. So consider if we really truly want the best of the best. For every position we have, we may not need direct experience. Um, what we may need is someone who can do the job, not someone who necessarily has done the job. So when we look at what needs to be done in this way and not simply from a lens of, well, the person who's in it right now has these things, so I would assume the next person is going to need the identical things, we really open the door to a, a maze of what's called multi-potentialites, but really the top tier of talent. And here's why. Usually people who are highly successful advance quickly, so they have less experience and they have less time in different roles. And I'm not saying they're job hopping. Maybe they get rapidly advanced because they take on new projects and they take a risk. So if we're saying I need 17 years of experience, someone who's been in a, a, in a different situation where they've had enormous projects piled on them may have gotten in seven years the same experience that your current 17-year person has. Um, so this is a way to kind of make sure that we get the best of the best. So we have our predominant outcome that the position needs. Think about this as we have one major thing. I mean, if it's a sales position, you probably need X dollars brought into the company. If it's billing, you need to make sure that you do the billing right, payroll, whatever. So you have your major, and then you probably have a couple of minors. Let's say three to five minor responsibilities in this role. So we're going to add these at the top of our scorecard. And then we're going to have on here like the metrics of which we would know that these outcomes got done. So if it was a payroll person, you would need to have a successful payroll that with no mistakes every single time. Or maybe you have one mistake every week, and that's it, and that's acceptable. Um, or for a salesperson, consider you might have um, X amount of sales calls a week or a month. If it was an engineering person, maybe you do X amount of drawings or RFPs, whatever that number is. But then we go down to the competencies. So what would the person who can get this outcome and perform these metrics need to have in order to do them? So if it was an accounting position, they probably don't need to be outgoing. Maybe they do, but probably not. And sales might be reversed. Um, for uh, for uh, some companies, they're looking for a pattern of achievement in all of their roles. So they need somebody who can be a team player. They need somebody who can work and communicate well under pressure. These are just ideas. Um, you can also go to an awesome source called Lou Adler, who's amazing, and he wrote a book called Hire with his, Hire with Your Head, and he's got basically 12 competencies that are indicative of a really high achiever. So if you've got like somebody who has six of them, five of them, you're, you're doing pretty well. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this scorecard and we're going to basically grade the people that we interview on where they stand on a scale of one to five is how they can accomplish this or do they have this. So if this is helpful, you can reach out to us at info at switchgearrecruiting.com and we can talk about your free hiring process audit and we'll be back with our next video about more good stuff on how to use this. Thanks.